the Bronx Journal. I'm your guest host, Robin Montes. In times of crisis, there are many challenges that people must overcome. When natural catastrophes such as tornadoes, hurricanes, and tsunamis strike, people must endure the pain, overcome the obstacles, survive, and rebuild. But who are the ones who always get to the scene of the action first, offering a helping hand and an endless amount of support for those who find themselves in danger? 99% of the time, it is the American Red Cross, an organization that for more than a century has been giving help and relief to people who find themselves in peril. Joining me now is Ms. Rebecca Callahan, a Red Cross volunteer who is here to discuss with us the origins and the mission of the Red Cross. Ms. Callahan, how are you? I'm just fine, thank you. Glad to have you here. So, first question, mm -hmm. what is the Red Cross? The Red Cross is an organization that assists people in times of peril, whether it is a disaster or whether it is a, you know, a local disaster or a large-scale incident. Most of the time in the uh, American Red Cross in Greater New York, we're dealing with local disasters every single day. There are almost seven on average a day so you guys in New always, York. You guys have to always be ready for we're a, We are on duty 24-7. There are volunteers who are working right now at a fire response somewhere in the fire. As we're speaking. Yes. So you guys are working 24-7. Correct. Now, a bit of a historical question. Mm -hmm. How did the uh, Red Cross originate? The Red Cross has a very long history, and it originated in a time of war when a um, a Swiss businessman actually ended up in a situation where he's seeing people dying all around him in the middle of a war and he pretty much looked at everything and you know his name was Henry Durant and he basically saw all of this happening saying somebody has to be the one taking care of all of these people you can't have absolute suffering and absolute peril in the middle of nowhere and actually not have somebody have the responsibility to respond to it. And, and, and was the Red Cross uh, uh, completely about uh, blood donation at first? Actually, blood donation was not really a factor until almost World War II. It really didn't, you know, they, they partially, I believe, due to the technology was not really happening until that era, but in terms of, you know, most of the response that was being handled by the Red Cross in Europe and then actually in the American Red Cross, um, b all of them were still disaster response. And uh, mm -hmm. due to the range of issues that we face in the world today, what kind of services does the Red Cross provide to the people who find themselves mm -hmm. in peril? In almost every situation, they are providing basic needs. You know, we uh, you know have often called it triage. We go in and help with the basic needs people have: basic food, basic shelter, basic, you know. Amenities, All the basic you know, everything that from need to you know, like. in a situation, you know, a typical one in New York is generally fires. I mean, we are going to fires so many times. Just even in the last month, I myself have been to quite a few of them so this particular month. And when you get somewhere and you've gone to a, you know, a five or six alarm fire and all of a sudden you're there and 18 apartments suddenly are completely burned out and we have to figure out where to put all of these people. And usually when I arrive, I'm so grateful that they're all alive, I then begin to work on <laughs> the next stages of that. And we basically get started in the beginning, whether it's one or two people in one family or whether it is 30 or 40 people infected, affected in an entire building, we still are going out there to get basic needs met. Let me ask you another question. Uh, does the Red Cross help uh, places that are currently in the middle of a war? Uh, like uh, Iraq or Afghanistan? We have a sister agency, and the way I would describe it, the International, the, it, the, the International Red Cross, Red Crescent, they are basically the international agency that is based still in, um, in, in, in Switzerland, basically throughout the world. Yeah. So when a large enough scale incident, you know, even in the United States, a large enough scale disaster has people deployed through International Red Cross from all over the world. And what is what is the role that uh, the Red Cross the Red Cross <laughs> plays currently in Iraq and Afghanistan? Right now in the there is a sister agency that we deal with that is the International Committee of the Red Cross. It is linked to the International Red Cross, but it is not the same thing as the American Red Cross. They are basically sister agencies in under the umbrella of the IRC. And how did the Red Cross respond uh, to Hurricane Katrina when it happened in 2005? Well, that I'm very familiar with. I, in the very first days before Katrina hit, there were efforts being made in the New York office handling 
inquiries by phone. People were, from the very beginning, in a mass um, phone center answering questions for people, trying to get them directions on how to get out of the um, New Orleans area and out of the regions. Because in the beginning, we're seeing you know Katrina coming you know through the Gulf and knowing it's coming. And so when you go into these places, what is the first thing that the Red Cross does, uh, does when they go into a place that has just been uh, hit with a natural disaster or, or bomb or war? Well, there are. Uh, it, Every situation is different, but the things that are similar, I would say, are the, the first response in any situation, and in, in New York this is especially true. If we show up on a scene because we have been directed by either the Office of Emergency Management or we have been notified by the F Fire Department of New York that they basically have a need, we show up, we check with whoever's in command there and our job director who on scene who arrives with us, we come, they tell us what they need. Sometimes they need mass care for people or, or basically just food and you know coffee and, and water for the first responders. Sometimes they need um, to get clients registered to get them long-term care. It depends, it, it varies a lot. And in, even in the last few days, we've had some families that have been able to stay with loved ones but who've been in houses uh, or apartments that are completely gutted and that we they will need another home. Do you know what is like the most difficult situation that the Red Cross has faced here in the Bronx in recent years perhaps? In the recent years up here there have been just the ones that I myself have gone to I say there are so many though that's why I'm thinking there, there there are numerous ones in the Bronx I mean in in the last just so far this year there have been I I would have to check the number to see, but there have been a large number of incidents nice. in the, in just the Bronx alone. You know, I believe just even three or four weeks ago, I was here at a four alarm that ended up having so it's a like bunch a of families sheltered. Of, uh, Most of the time, it is. I mean, you will see. You know, unless we end up responding to a bus crash on the highway, it all it varies. I mean, there are days we have everything. You know that, uh, unfortunately, the world has, again, been faced with another issue, uh, which is the Japanese tsunami. Mm -hmm, absolutely. What is the current role of the Red Cross in uh, Japan, and what are they doing to help the people? For that? Well, the, Japan has their own branch of the Red Cross. So the, the, the Japanese Red Cross, they are already doing a large amount of first response and a large amount of long-term care in Japan as we speak. They are doing everything from medical care to mass, you know, mass scale sheltering for thousands and thousands of people. So they have their own branch, so they, they yes. do a lot of the things. So let me ask you another question. Being that this emergency with Japan involves uh, nuclear radiation, mm -hmm. what is the Red Cross doing to provide the help uh, that they need to provide to the people while keeping their uh, volunteers safe and healthy. Well, as is typical in any situation like this, if once evacuees are taken out of a hazardous incident like this, they are taken out as far away as possible and then assisted there. So people are, you know, the Red Cross is not going into where the most dangerous zone is. They are already taking care of the clients that have been evacuated from where the radiation is dangerous. So what can the average citizen who is watching right now uh, could do to help uh, Japan through the Red Cross right now? Well, actually a large number of people have already taken that step. They Basically, people have gone everywhere from online to by phone to by text message to donate funds to the Red Cross. And where, where can people donate home. blood and money? Well, those are two different places. I wouldn't necessarily go to the same the place internet? to do that. <laughs> um, I can tell you that the the American Red Cross in Greater New York does not handle blood donation. Mm -hmm. It is basically, you know, the, it due to a variety of reasons that is not, there are a couple of places in the outer regions of Greater New York, some of the um, outer counties that actually do still deal with donated blood, but that is not really a responsibility we do in Greater New York. But the primary role for Red Cross in Greater New York is not is not blood donation. They so is there any additional contact information that you can provide us so that the people could get involved with the Red Cross? If I, the best way to find out anything you would like about it, the Red Cross in Greater New York is to go to www.nyredcross.org and that is the fastest way to get all the information you could possibly need. Thank you very much. You're quite welcome. We'll